This video provides a concise overview of how to write, debug, and optimize Julia code. I'm using Visual Studio Code with the official Julia extension and have launched Julia with Alt J O, O being the letter, not the number. Revise.jl is set up so that changes to the code won't require Julia to be restarted. Julia's repo has four modes Julian mode, help mode, package mode, and shell mode. Julian mode is the default prompt where I can run Julia commands. Enter help mode by typing a question mark, then the name of a function, type, variable, or macro. This will print the relevant documentation. Typing a closed square bracket brings up package mode, from which packages can be installed, created, and managed. Prefixing a line with a semicolon will run that line as a shell command. I'll write a simple program that simulates planetary motion to demonstrate what Julia code looks like and as a test bed for debugging and optimization. I've tweaked the governing equation so that planets bounce off of each other if they get too close, which prevents numerical instability. First, I'll create a vector of random two-dimensional planets, each with mass m, position x, and velocity v. That done, I'll update the velocity of each particle according to the total gravitational force on it, then update the position of each particle according to these new velocities. A thousand iterations will be run, and the time it took to complete them recorded. As a quick check, I'll print the sum of all masses, positions, and velocities at the end of the simulation, expecting said sum to be fairly small, say three digits or less. Such a Julia script can be run from the shell or within Julia itself. Using include will run all of the code in the script exactly as if said code had been typed in the REPL, meaning that functions and variables defined in the script will be available there. The second sum makes clear that this implementation is incorrect, so I'll put the code for stepping the simulation forward in a function for easier debugging. I'll use debugger.jl to see what's going wrong, but the Julia extension for VS Code has a built-in debugger that you can use instead if you're more comfortable with a debugger integrated with your IDE. Once I've entered the function, adding a breakpoint on line 24 and running will allow me to see the values of all the variables used in the velocity update loop with a backtrace. The problem is clear. F's sign should be opposite R hats, but it isn't. This means that the force is repulsive rather than attractive as it should be. This is easily fixed by swapping the sign of R hat, the direction between x1 and x2. With this fix, the results are within reason. I'll now move on to optimization, since a thousand iterations with 25 planets should complete nearly instantly. The first thing I'll do is check for type instabilities with code warn type. All of the red indicates a serious problem. Variables with type any require allocations, which can slow down programs dramatically. NBS being a vector of type any is the root cause of most of the problems here. Using a vector of concrete type results in a non-trivial speedup and less allocations, but there's still clearly a problem. Code warn type confirms that there are still issues, though not as severe as before. F is still of type any, which is ultimately caused by G being of type any. Making G a constant and clarifying that it's a floating point number results in another significant speedup, but step is still allocating. The flame graph resulting from a call to prof view which is provided by the VS Code Julia extension, can show sources of slowness. Hovering over a rectangle will show which line of code it represents, clicking on it will expand it, and pressing Ctrl then clicking on it will open a VS Code tab on that line of code. The array constructor, which is shown with a warm color to emphasize the problem, is using a lot of time and leading to redundant allocations. Replacing the vectors that are generated in the velocity update for loop with static vectors, which are of compile time size and thus require no allocation, fixes the problem and yields a dramatic speedup. To make subsequent optimization more convenient, I'll generate a package in which to do subsequent work. Julia code is easier to work with when it's packaged, so prefer to use packages rather than scripts for any non-trivial programs. After adding a few dependencies, Adapting the script for the package involves modifying it to be a module and exporting the functions that are meant for external use. The documentation that I've written, the strings above the module and functions, is available in help mode. 
Before optimizing further, I'll add some unit tests to ensure that subsequent changes don't lead to incorrect results. These tests can be run from the package manager after activating the package. To ensure that the tests themselves are correct, I'll verify that the results seem physical with an animation of the progress of a simulation through time. I'll create a convenience function to build a system of planets with zero net velocity and overload plots.scatter to display two-dimensional planet systems with marker sizes proportional to planet mass. This done, creating an animation that shows the progression of the simulation through time is simple, and the results look reasonable. I'll continue optimizing now that there's a way to ensure that optimizations don't introduce bugs. FastMath enables compiler optimizations that may violate strict IEEE 754 rules, offering performance improvements when exact compliance is not necessary. I'll now create a custom class representing an n-body system and implement the abstract array interface for it. The data is stored contiguously and compactly, which should mean a high performance ceiling. The tests and animation confirm that it still works, and speed has increased slightly, giving a solid foundation from which to optimize further. Modifying step to take advantage of the internal structure of n-body system results, surprisingly, in a major slowdown. Prof view reveals that the problem is on line 85, where a planet's velocity is being updated. The problem is that array slices are copies by default, resulting in an allocation. Using the views macro fixes this. I'll now fix some algorithmic inefficiencies, first eliminating half of the iterations since this is a symmetric all-to-all -all comparison. Along with implementing the math within the velocity update loop more efficiently, this doubles performance compared to when I first switched to the n-body system struct. Inbounds in SIMD, which indicate that loops can be vectorized and won't attempt out-of-bounds memory accesses, yield a bit more performance. Sometimes the compiler is smart enough to understand that this is possible without inbounds in SIMD, in which case they won't make any difference. The code is now 2,000 times faster than it was at the beginning of this video, all due to gradual enhancements. This is Julia's main advantage. Generic, simple Julia code can be slowly massaged into performant code without needing to switch tools or languages.